Hello and welcome to Ask a Web Geek. My name is CJ Gilbert and I'll be your host today through the wilds of the internet. We're here live in the web cave in the web jungle and we're here to present to you some tips and tricks and ideas. I'm a website developer and as I've been helping clients for so many years with their websites, they would always have extra questions. How do I do this? How do I upload this? Hey, CJ, I'm trying to upload this picture. It's not working. It's telling me this. It's not the right size or format. And I don't understand. Can you help me with that? Absolutely we can. And after getting all those questions, I thought, you know, let me make a show. Let me make a place every week where you can ask me all those questions and we can just answer them together. And I know that if you have a question like that, there's a million other people that have that same question. The thing that all of you have in common is your business owners, your entrepreneurs, your independent professionals, authors, speakers, coaches, and you need the internet. You need the website and these tools to help you in your business, but they create frustration for you. They're, it's not as smooth sailing as you wish it could be. So that's why I'm here. I'm your jungle guide. I'm your website safari guide, and we're going to hack our way through the jungle together and get you where you need to go. So. Um, Featured Animal of the Week. Yes, yes, I do have someone very special to show you. It's this weird spider balloon that my kids picked up from someone delightful. So he'll come over here and say hello to you. Uh, I don't really have anything specific to tell you about this other than it's a spider and it's a balloon. And isn't that fun? Um, so I do have light. Okay, excuse me. I'm trying to do a show here. Oh my gosh. I do have live spiders in the web cave with me. In fact, we got two new spiders for Emily's birthday uh, this last week with one more on the way. So that brings our grand total of our spider uh, collection over here. We have 10 spiders so far. And there are a few of them that I will be able to show you. Excuse me. Gosh, taking over the show. There are a few I'll be able to show you in the weeks to come that won't run away, but I'll still have to figure out how to do that. So anyway, in our Halloween themed episode, this this is our featured animal of the week. The uh, the spider balloon, spider puppet, puppet on a stick. OK, so we'll put him away. If he'll let us <laughs> and we'll get the show going. I don't know. It's for your amusement, guys. I, I just I just do this for you. Here's my book. It's the five golden keys to sharpen your website. Uh, I accidentally wrote this several years ago after talking to so many business owners and hearing that they had questions, they had needs, they didn't know what to do with their website. They were lost in the internet jungle. And so I wrote that book to teach you that your website is your number one tool. Your website is your number one tool to grow and support your business. Let's talk a little bit today about how we can make that happen and go into some of the other technologies that are available for you. Let's jump right in. Ask a Web Geek. My name is CJ Gilbert. I'm your web safari guide. Hey, if you ever want to write me an email, cj at askawebgeek.com. That'll come right to me. And of course, check out our website, askawebgeek.com, which looks an awful lot like this right over here. You can go to askawebgeek.com and join our Facebook group, subscribe on YouTube, find the links to our podcast. Would love it if you'd subscribe on Apple. If you're an, if you're an Apple user, subscribe on Apple Podcasts. If you're an Android user, subscribe on Google Podcasts. Would love your subscription and your review on those places. Really helps share the show with others. What would you like to ask a web geek? This is your show. This is the time and place for you to ask me any questions you have on websites, marketing, email campaigns, anything that's online, anything you need to use for your business. We're here to help you through it. And I want to teach you that your website is your number one tool to grow and support your business. There's a lot of things out there that you can use. There's a lot of cool tools on the internet. But you know what? Your website is the only one that you can fully own and control. The only one that you can fully own and control. That's important. So make sure you have a website that you can fully own and control. Yes, you want to use social media. You want to use all those other places. But you want to make sure that you have your website that you own and control and then go out and then spider out to all the other places. Super important. All righty. <clears throat> 
you know, your website should enhance each aspect of your business. It should help you attract more customers, make more sales, enhance your customer service, increase your efficiency, and all these things add up. They help you save time, save money, and ultimately serve your clients better, faster, and easier. I want to take just a minute to congratulate you on being with us this morning. You know, if you're here, that means that you are taking some time out of your busy, busy day to improve your life. It may be because you want to hear what ridiculous things this clown is going to say, and that's okay too. I'll, I'll always dance for your amusement. I'm happy to do that. But the real reason you're probably here is because you want to improve something about your business, and you're here to take the steps to do that. So I say congratulations. Give yourself a pat on the back and really reward yourself. Good for you. You're doing a great job. You're in the right place at the right time, and you're going to learn something that's going to help your business today. Ask a web geek. We're in a bunch of places. Join our Facebook group. That's where everything gets going. We record the show live together as a community in the Facebook group, Ask a Web Geek. And the reason we do that is so that I can have a live studio audience with us while we're recording. They're talking to me. They're asking me questions. They're giving me feedback. And your comments, questions, and feedback is always welcome. Come join our Facebook group so you can participate in the live recording every Wednesday. We get started at 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. And if you join us for that hour, hour and a half that we're recording, uh, you can ask questions and interact with us live. Would love for you to do that. And then subscribe on YouTube because once we've recorded the show via Facebook group, a couple days later, I crunch it and, and hack it apart and create a show out of it. And that show goes to YouTube and becomes a podcast. So subscribe on YouTube if you would please to our Ask a Web Geek channel. All those links and details, of course, at our website. And if you'd follow us on Twitter, if you're a Twitter person, I'm on Twitter at, at AskAWebGeek. You can tweet along with the show if you're watching on YouTube or you're listening to a podcast later. Tweet along. Let us know which episode. Let us know what stupid thing I just said that you, that just made you laugh. And let us know what questions you have as you're listening to those shows. And use a hashtag of some kind, hashtag AAWG or hashtag AskAWebGeek if you've got the, the spot in those 240 characters to do that. And listen to our podcast and leave us a review. Would love your involvement in any to all of these places. Welcome aboard. Disclaimer, you must be willing to have your question or issue addressed in a public forum. Of course, I publish the show, Facebook, YouTube, podcast. It's available all over. And I just want to make sure that any questions that you ask me is okay that I answer them. I will. We obscure all password fields. If we're logging into your back end of your website and you want us to hide some kind of information, I've got tons of ways to do that. So don't worry about that. Just let me know if you have a concern. Otherwise, I'm going to be totally transparent and show everybody how we do everything here so that it helps you when you need to do it later. Keep in mind, this is not legal or professional advice. I'm a web geek. I know a lot about the internet and websites and all these online tools, but I'm not an attorney and I'm not a CPA. So I'm not giving you any professional advice for your business. I'm just sharing some ideas and opinions on how you can use the internet and these tools to better your life and business. But of course, you accept responsibility for everything, including your own success. Who am I? My name is CJ Gilbert. I've been a web developer for over 20 years. Now I'm a speaker and author. Um, Like I mentioned a few years ago, I I worked with hundreds of business owners and I realized while helping them with their websites, they know they need a website, but they don't really know what it's for or what to do with it. And after writing down some thoughts, I accidentally wrote the book, Five Golden Keys to Sharpen Your Website. This is available on Amazon, as well as on my website, as well as here, there, and everywhere. And I also have a couple free resources I want to share with you. My business is serving your business. My business is not available to the general public. I don't sell widgets and whatever to the general people. I only serve other people's businesses. So that's what I'm here. I'm here for you and your business. Let me know how I can help you. Let me know what you're struggling with. Let me know what tools you need to use. um, And we'll work together because I believe that if I can teach you how to use, how to better use your website and some of these online tools. I really believe it's going to help you do more business and do better business. It literally helps you serve your clients better, faster, and easier. So, so jump in. Let's, let's do some work together right up front to help everything become easier and faster after that. And keep on the lookout for your golden nugget. You know, our, our minds are so interesting as you 
each time you consume this information with repetition, one of my mentors, Eric Lofholm, says consume information in repetition. If you are getting something good out of a piece of material, a book or a video, consume it over and over. He says, listen or watch it seven times. And I don't know if I want to tell you to watch all my videos seven times, uh, but if you do, I know that you'll get something new each time that you that you go through that material, just because of the way our brains work. So keep your eye out for that, for that, and you'll find it. Grab some paper, draw a line right down the middle, label the left side notes and the right side actions. This gives you the chance to take the you know th constant stream of notes down that left side as I'm talking and going through things, and then on the right side, it gives you a special place that you can write out those action steps because there's going to be some things that jump out at you that you want to take quick, fast action on and move at the speed of instruction. So make sure to jot those items in the right-hand column so you can get to them easily and make sure to star your golden nuggets. Want to talk about a couple sponsors real quick? Ask a Web Geek, sponsored by The Active Life Company. TheActiveLifeCompany.com. They have a wonderful all natural skin protectant called Cover. And th this is, um, by the way, this is a member of our community. Her name is Melissa. And she gave me a coffee mug and became our first official sponsor of the show. And then she went ahead and created a special discount code just for you. You can use discount code WebGeek. W-E-B-G-E-E-K, all one word, all uppercase, WebGeek, to get 15% off of your order at theactivelifecompany.com. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks for being part of our community. Really appreciate your involvement, your questions, your answers, your comments, and your support. Last week on the show, we talked about directory listings and how important they are. And so I just want to remind you about this free tool you can use on my website, scan.gilbertstudios.com. This allows you to scan your directory listings. You may not even be aware that this is something that exists on the internet, that your business is represented in these online business directories. So use my free scan tool to figure out where you're listed, where you're not, and what information needs to be corrected. You can find that at scan scan.gilbertstudios.com scan s-c-a-n you're going to scan your listings scan.gilbertstudios.com you can punch in your business name address and phone number and it's going to do a live search right in front of you of the top 60 to 80 websites where you'll appear and how to fix it and finally, check out my free video workshop. I took the material from my book, my main points, and I created for you a free seven-part video workshop. Each video is less than 10 minutes. It's bite-sized. It allows you to consume it just a little piece at a time and, um, and work one piece at a time to improve your website, which is really working to improve your business. You can get that at mywebsitesafari.com. That is a free course. Pop in your name and email. I'll send it all to you, and you'll have the choice. It's up to you. You could sit down on a Saturday and go through the whole course at once, or you could just take one piece a day, 10 minutes a day, to work on your business, or you could do it over the course of three weeks. I have an option that says, send me the videos every three days, and then you'll get one email every three days, seven emails, seven videos, and work on it over the course of three weeks. However you do it, do it. Work on your website, improve your website, improve your business, and improve your results. Okay, got a lot of really great stuff to go in today, so we are going to jump right in. So I encourage you to buckle up, stay hydrated. I've got my, my coffee and my water right here next to me. I got a lot of great material to go over with you today, so let's jump right in. Okay, our featured topic of the week. Let's take a look at the last couple episodes that we did. Uh, in episode 10, we talked about your goals and your demographic targeting. In episode 11, I went over how to send an email blast through the uh, email software that I use. And in episode 12, we went over how to do a social media blast. And then in episode 13 last week, we went into a full SEO strategy on how you can improve the content in your website to attract more clients to you 
how we want to start by building the content in your website first and then going out to the social media channels and the directory listings and creating links back to your content. So I'm pulling this up now to share with you if any of these pieces could help you right now, jump back to them and watch it. Episode 13 was really dense. We did a lot of great stuff and we touched on uh, social media and email. So if you want to then go back to 12 and 11 to see how we do those pieces, do so. Absolutely do that. But the thing I want to highlight for you today right now is episode 10, where I talked about creating your goals and your target market for your website. When I sit down with a client to talk to them about their website, I start with their goals and their demographic targeting. I send them a questionnaire with a list of questions that they can start thinking about so then in our first real conversation with each other, we can start right away with some, some really good uh, things about their business. What are your goals for your website? Who's your target market? And so go back to episode 10 and dive into that because that's the most important thing to start with before we go into this very next piece that I'm going to share with you. So if we're sitting down right now to talk about your website, the first thing we're going to talk about is your goals for your website and your target market. So if you haven't heard me talk about that, go back to episode 10 and watch the section on goals and target market. I believe that's our featured topic in episode 10. Feel free to fast forward through the beginning of the show. I do not mind. I do not feel offended or insulted if you fast forward through my nonsense and jump right to the material and topic that you want to talk about. So jump to the featured topic for episode 10, where we talk about goals and target market. That's step one for you, okay? Once you've got that down, once you know what your goals are in your target market, now we're going to go into a couple new things. So the first thing I want to present to you is this concept right here, what is the internet? Now, this is never to insult anyone's intelligence. This is never to talk down to anyone. This is simply to define a couple words so that we have these common words that we can use in our conversation, okay? So let me show this to you. So first of all, what is the internet? Well, imagine, if you will, that each one of these squares represents a computer, and they're all hooked together. Do you see that? This is an interconnected computer computer network. And that's where we get the word internet, interconnected computer network. Hi, Diana. Glad you jumped in. Uh, good to see you here this morning. So the internet is an interconnected computer network. But you know what? The computers are not actually hooked up in a straight line like up here at the top. They're actually hooked up down here at the bottom. They're hooked up like this, kind of like a circle where they're all hooked into each other. And that's where we get the phrase, the World Wide Web. So how does it work? Well, you know what? When I first made this drawing, in 2006, there was only one kind of website, what we call a static website. And now we have two kinds of website. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that today. So in a static website, it works like this. Someone like myself over here on the right hand side builds a website on my own computer. So you for some reason, I don't know if you can see my cursor pointing at that, but imagine that computer on the far right is my computer in my office. So if I'm building you a static website, I'm going to build it, I'm going to code it over here on my computer, type, type, type. If it's a one page website, it's one page of code. If it's five page website, it's five pages of code. And I type it up, type, 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 and I, I save those files and now it's ready to go live. So then I need to upload those files to one of these computers over here on the left. And the fancy term for that is your host, your website host. Okay, what's a host? Your website host is kind of like we're renting an apartment for your website to live in on the internet. So we have to pay some company. I don't want to mention the big, you know who they are already, like GoDaddy, for example, right? They spend the most money on advertising during the Super Bowl. So I'm sure you've heard of them, GoDaddy. Well, by the way, I also offer website hosting services. So if I can help you with that, please let me know. Very comparably priced. And yet, of course, I provide better service and a, and a higher level quality hosting. But anyway, wherever your host is, you need a host. So that's the computer that we're renting space on for your website to live in. 
So in a static website, I build it on my own machine and then I upload those files to the host and then it's live. It's live to the whole world at that point. And if you want to make a change or update a price or update a service, I go back over here to my own computer, type, 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 save those changes, and then we upload those, uh, upload those files right back over there to that host. And then it's live. So that's a static website. That's the first kind of website. So now we have a second kind of website. We call it a dynamic website. You may have heard the phrase web 2.0. That was like huge, you know, 10 years ago, web 2.0 was the phrase being used. And what that means is it's a dynamic website. So it's not built on my computer and then uploaded. It's actually built right directly on that host computer. And what happens is it's kind of like two websites in one. There's the the front of the website that everybody else can see, but then there's the back end of the website that you and I can log into, make changes, add pages, update your prices, update your content, your services, whatever, save it, publish it, and then once it's saved and published, then it's live to the rest of the world. So you can kind of think of a static website, it's smaller, it's sleeker, one page site, one page code, five page site, five pages of code. That's it. That's all there is to it. Upload those five pages. It's live to the world. The dynamic website, totally a different kind of animal. It's like a machine. It's built using a software and it's interacting with the server all the time. There's the files on the site, similar to the static site, but there's also a database that holds the information and these two pieces are tied together and talking back and forth. It literally builds the website every time someone comes to it. So this is a dynamic website, meaning it can, it can dynamically change depending on what's happening in that back end. It's also the perfect place, see last week where we talked about blogging and uh, publishing articles in the future, this is the kind of software you need to do that because you can log in, you can create your blog, you can create four blogs, we talked about this last week, we can create a four part blog and then we can set those blogs to launch you know, November 1st, November 8th, November, right, whatever. We can set the dates we want them to publish. Do the work one time and you can pre-program pre an entire month's worth of work in your website for you. So that's the kind of software you need. You need that back-end software called a content management system. And there's a couple different kinds of software that's used. You've probably heard of WordPress. My favorite is called Joomla. There's also Drupal and several others. So whatever software you're using, it's that backend software that's running the website. It gives you a place to log into it, do stuff, change stuff, publish it or set it to publish at a particular day or time. There's a lot of power in that kind of website. So the first part of my message today is there's two kinds of websites. There's the static website and the dynamic website. I wouldn't say either one is better than the other because it really depends on your goals. Remember I told you to set your goals and talk about your target market? That's really what determines what kind of website you're gonna need. So when I sit down with a client, I don't start by talking about these kinds of websites. I start by talking about that business what the business needs, the customers and clients of that business, their target market, what's important to them. That's the information that then tells me what kind of a website might work best for them. So go back to episode 10, was it? Episode 10, where I talked about the goals in the target market. Then come back here as we're talking about what kind of website is gonna work best to fit your goals. And of course, ask me any questions you have about that. I'll help, I'll help coach you or guide you on what kind of a website's gonna work. Let me share the next slide with you. So this one right here is establishing some key phrases, some terminology. What is the internet? Talking about website hosting, talking about the two different kinds of websites, static versus dynamic, and how they work. Okay, now let me share with you um, basically the different kinds of websites that I can make. In my company, Gilbert Studios, we basically offer seven different levels of websites. There's a lot of words on this page. I'm going to walk you through it, so don't get confused seven levels of websites because they build on each other. And as I'm sitting down with a client and talking to them about what kind of website they need, they're not gonna need all seven of these. They're only gonna need one solution. What's the one solution that's gonna work best for them? Or the one solution that's gonna work best today 
and you can work into the other ones. So let me just really quickly review these with you. Let's start at the bottom. I'm starting at the very bottom of the list. So can you see down there it says the fire ant. You can just imagine that as a one page website. It's a static website, one page. Now this has become very popular. Landing page websites are very popular. They could be a one page site. It could be a long one page site though. This is very uh, common in a sales page or a landing page or you don't need multiple pages in your website for some reason, this might be the right solution for you. So at Gilbert Studios, we call that the fire ant. It's a one page website. And then moving up the ladder, the next step up, the Piranha, you could kind of think of that as a three to five page website. By the way, all the websites that we build, this is a big point, so I'm gonna pull it back here for a second. All the websites that we build at Gilbert Studios belong to and are owned by our customer. Now this is a big distinction that I need to make because there's some companies out there that you can only use that website as long as you're paying them their monthly fee. And that's something that you may not know about going into. And so it's something that I'm here to tell you about. Uh, we don't do it like that. If you hire me to build a website for you, you own that website. Now, I would like to reserve the right to consider myself the author. It's like you're commissioning me to paint you a masterpiece. So I'm the, the artist, if you will. I'm going to paint the masterpiece for you and sign my name at the bottom. Whoop. But that belongs to you. It you own it so you can hang it in whatever room of your house you can move it from house to house think of that as like your hosting metaphor the point is it belongs to you you can hang it wherever you want it's yours but if you want to continue to work with me monthly of course i want to help you maintain it and update it and all that kind of stuff but you're not locked into it do you see the difference you can hire me on a monthly basis to help you with stuff great i'd love to but you're not required to does that make sense there's some companies you're required to keep paying the monthly or, or the website isn't yours. So that's a big deal. I needed to step aside for just a moment to, to clarify that. So all of the websites that we're building over here, they belong to you. So even if it's that, uh, we're, we're at the second from the bottom tier right now on the ladder, the Piranha. All of our websites also include search engine optimization. I talked a little bit about that last week. And they are all mobile responsive, meaning they work on desktop, laptop, mobile, tablets, all the devices. So that piranha level right there, consider that a three to five page website. And then we move up the list and we reach the chameleon. This is also a three to five to seven to 10 page website, but there's a lot more emphasis here on the graphics and the photos and, and the, um, the, 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 yeah, the, the, I'm thinking graphics and slideshows and, and lots of pretty things. And again, everything that we build for you at my company anyway, belongs to you. That includes the photos that includes the graphics. So everything that we're building as part of that belongs to you and you can use it for anything else that you choose. So for example, let's say we create three to five slides and that you come to the home page and you get that first opening area with the with the slideshow it's got a picture and maybe some text that pops up and maybe there's three of them and they rotate that is yours and you can take that same slide put it on your social media do it as a blog post do it as the cover photo for your facebook page whatever material we're creating for you belongs to you and you can use it everywhere else Whatever photos we get, whether you have a photo and you give it to me to use it on the website, or I find a great photo in my stock library or something and you love it, you can have it and use it also in the rest of your material. We want everything to be congruent. We want every, all your branding to go together. So all of these things are included in the websites I build. Your results may vary if you're with a different developer. Everyone does it a little bit differently. So keep that in mind. So these bottom three levels, if you will, this is our static website. Then you'll see right in the middle, the baboon, that's got a thick line around it. And the reason is because that's where we cross the bridge. We cross, we cross the threshold from the static websites into the dynamic websites. So the baboon and up those top four levels, those are all dynamic websites. So it all starts right here at the, at the baboon. And let me just, um, let me point because I like to point. I like to talk with my hands. It helps me talk. Okay, so <laughs> this level right here, uh, the baboon, once we build that with the content management system, that creates the framework. That creates the the um, the system that 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 
you're you're really not lit. I want to say I want to say so many things to you right now that they're all bunching together and bottlenecking at my mouth. So let me just step back for a second and say that once we build you a website with a content management system, you are set up, you are prepared to do an unlimited number of things. There's no limit to the number of pages you can create or material you can create. It's essentially unlimited. Do you see the difference in a static website? You tell me I want five pages. I code you five pages. You get five pages. In the dynamic website, you say, I want the dynamic website. I want the system. So I build you the website with the system and you can make as many pages as you want, as long as you want forever. Okay. Uh, so that's the big distinction. And we can have that conversation about which one of these is going to work better for you. Um, but this is the big point. That system, that framework gives you a, um, gives you a foundation that you can use to do a whole bunch more stuff. And that's what these top three levels represent. So check this out. The baboon, that's your admin control panel. That's the two in one website. Everyone else sees the front, but you and I can log into the back and change things and add blogs. That would include a blog, that kind of a thing, right? Then from there, that creates this foundation and we can continue to add more stuff into it. Now you may not ever need any of the rest of these things, but let me tell you what they are anyway, because it might give you an idea or you might come across a friend who needs something like this, and then you'll know a little bit about what to tell them. So, so after we've got that baboon built the, with the content management system, we can add more software that does more stuff. So the next one up the ladder is what we call the Rhino. So this is like a shopping cart website. This is for people that are selling products, usually maybe services, but it's usually products. And it's it's got the software that's built in. It calculates all the stuff. We create all these rules so it can calculate shipping and taxes and all that kind of stuff. We hook it up with the payment processor. You already have one or we can find you one or we can use PayPal. There's a bunch of solutions there too. So the, the, uh, the Rhino is a shopping cart style website, buying and selling products, okay, online. Then the next level up, what we call the Jaguar, this is a membership style website. In a membership website, your customers are coming and they're paying you either one time or monthly or yearly or however we set it up, even, even free, but usually they're paying you something monthly or yearly to access some protected member only area. So there's like the front of the website that everybody can see. And then there's like, become a member. You could have multiple levels. There could be like a, a bronze, silver, gold levels of material, or it could just be one member only section and they have to pay you. And then they get their own password, their own special access to this protected member area. This is called user control, user access control. Basically they're paying you. We're giving them credentials that allow them to then log in and be able to access that member only area. So maybe you have an educational course, for example, um, on how to do something or how to create something or how to build something in your business or life or your health or your finances or whatever it is. I'm working with a bunch of clients in all those fields. They're all building their courses right now. This is the kind of website you need to support that. There's a member only area. Someone signs up, they pay you, they are granted access, they are given a, a username and, and password, and then they can log into the website. They're not logging into the back end. They're still logging into the front end it's a little bit different. We can we can go into that. Let me know if you have questions. But basically, they're given a password that allows them to access this member only area of the website. Does that make sense? And then finally, the very top up there, what we call the lion is our social platform. Uh, that is to say, you're a, you know, maybe you're a big company and you want your very own, I didn't say this out loud, but Facebook, you want your very own Facebook. I wouldn't say that. I would say your very own social platform where you want people to be able to log in and exchange photos, status updates, whatever's appropriate for your people and your communication. I would never say that we're ripping off Facebook and creating a clone of Facebook. That's not what we're talking about at all. We're talking about a, a uh, basically a membership website in a way. 
it's a form of membership website, except it's a special form of membership website where your members can interact with each other and exchange information and photos and resources and whatever is appropriate to your company. So as you can see, there's a lot we can do with a website. When someone says to me, hey, CJ, how much does a website cost? I, I kind of go blank for a second because it, that range is dramatic. It could be you know, I can't answer that question until I know what kind of a website you want and what you want it to do. So that's why we start with your goals and your demographic targeting. Then we talk about the different kinds of websites. Then we talk about the, this ladder of, of websites that we can create and we figure out what's going to be the right solution for you. And as far as the price, it's all depend on your budget. It's all dependent on the needs of the company. Honestly, a website can range anywhere from 2000 to 20000 I don't think I've had anyone pay me 20000 for a website yet, but I'd love to. If you, if you want to be my first $20,000 website, you let me know and we'll take care of it. But it really does depend on the budget and the needs of the company. Does all that make sense? Intranet, yes, beautiful Garrison, thank you. That was a perfect comment. This is an example of an intranet. Maybe your company... Uh, wants to have an internal website that your people, your uh, not necessarily your clients, but your uh, your employees or the people within your company can log into it and exchange information. That's a great example, Garrison. Thank you. That that's known as an intranet, not the internet, but intranet, meaning it's internal to your company. Internal intranet. It's an internet website for people internally. Does that make sense? And that's why it's called an intranet. Great point, Garrison. Awesome. Thanks for chiming in right then. Any other comments, questions, or feedback on this piece? I do have some other things to go into, but I wanted to share with you the different kinds of websites in an, in an idea to give you some more ideas, more suggestions on what might work for you. Let me know if you have any questions or follow up comments on that. OK, and we're going to move. We're going to keep moving forward. All right, it is now time to ask a web geek. I've got a couple questions that we've been asked by our uh, our audience. And so we're going to jump into that right now. Uh, we have already answered all of these questions. I'm not going to read it to you now. I've read it on previous shows. But if you have any of these questions, you can go back and find the episodes where we're talking about these. They are all at askawebgeek.com. Do join our Facebook group because we've got a lot of ongoing conversations. We're talking about customer relationship management tools, CRM, project management tools. Uh, Melissa wanted to know about PR web. Peter wants to know about some good books and resources uh, for offline marketing techniques. If you have any ideas or suggestions, please jump into our Facebook group, find these conversations, and chime in with your ideas and suggestions. Our first question is from Carly. Carly wants to know how to get more traffic to a blog post. This is a really great question. And so I wanted to bring it on the show today specifically because I kind of answered this question in last week's show. So I just want to encourage you, if you want to know how to get more traffic to a blog post, check out episode 13, Ask a Web, Ask a Web Geek episode 13. It's called uh, Lost in the SEO Jungle, How to Attract More Clients. So we laid out a full SEO strategy on First of all, what's SEO? What does that mean? And uh, why it's important to you? And what are some things you should think about? And how to include those keywords in your website? And how to attract traffic to your website? The kind of traffic you want. Prospective clients and customers. Not just people looking to sell you their stuff. But, but helpful things to you as a business. Clients, customers. And some ideas and strategies on how to do that. Create the content. Do it first in your website site, then go out to social media, plan for your social media posts, plan for your email blasts, and I laid out a strategy on exactly how you can do that. And then you can jump back to those other episodes, 11 and 12, to see how we did an email blast and how we did our social media blasts. So all of those episodes go together. 
episode 10, Goals and Demographic Targeting. Today, episode 14 on the different kinds of websites. Then go back, episode 13, on what kind of content to build into your website. And then go back to 11 and 12 on how to send those email blasts and how to set up your social media. They all go together. All of those pieces go together. Please let me know if you have any questions as you go through that. Great question uh, from Carly. Thank you. Next question is from Peter, and I'm going to spend just a few minutes answering his question this morning uh, as the last piece of our show here. And I've got some screenshots to share with you what we're talking about. So first of all, his question is, wondering now that email to me at company.com really ends up at Gmail, and he can reply with a from set as me at company.com, how does one create and interject an initial one-time send, your message is important and will respond soon, auto-reply? Things that hate you go, hmm. Okay, so let me dissect his question a little bit for you. So he's saying he has a Gmail account, and inside his Gmail account, it is, it is now set up to use his domain name. Peter at whatever domain name.com. So that part is set up. It, he's, he receives the email and he can send from the email. So his next question is, how can I create an autoresponder that basically when someone sends an email to me, it sends them back. Hey, thanks for writing. Your information is important. We'll get back to you soon. I have a solution for this. I don't know if it's going to accomplish absolutely everything you want it to, but let me share with you what I can and maybe something will help you out. Okay. So there's a couple things I want to tell you about as we go down this particular rabbit trail. And the first thing is, uh, the first thing is the side note inside the Gmail settings, there is something called a vacation responder. P this isn't exactly an answer to Peter's question, but I wanted to point it out before we go any deeper. So you can in the Gmail settings, the settings is located in the upper right hand call corner. There's a little gear icon. Click that scroll down. You'll find settings in there. And in the first panel, there's a lot of panels in that settings. The first panel is the general settings. Scroll down all the way to the bottom and you'll find this area right here, vacation responder. So this is exactly what it sounds like. You're going out of town for a certain amount of time and you want to send an email to everybody that writes you that says, Hey, I'm out of town. I'll be out of town for a week. Uh, if it's important, please call or text me or follow up with my office or whatever you wanted to say. I'm sure you've seen these kind of emails before. Here's how you do it in Gmail. So you can turn it on. You can set the day you want it to begin and the day you want it to end and the subject and the message that you wanted to say. So that's already pre-set up inside the Gmail settings vacation responder. Not what Peter's asking about specifically, but I wanted to point it out um, that you can create this as an autoresponder to everybody who emails you between one date and another date. Okay. So if that could help you, that's where to go to find that. But that's not what he's asking about. So we'll talk about that next. So the next thing I want to tell you about Peter is Gmail's canned responses. This is something that I've been using in Gmail for years and I love it. And they just changed the name of it for the last decade. It's been called canned responses and they just changed the name of it to templates. So you know, your mileage may vary, but if you look inside the settings, you're going to find templates now, formerly canned responses. Gmail has this cool place where they would experiment with different features and canned responses was one of those features. And I've been playing with it for a decade and it's amazing. Uh, and here's one of the ways you can use it. So here's how to do it. First of all, you're going to need to enable the templates. It's not in there by default. You have to turn it on. So I'll show you where that is. Then you have to create your template. I'll show you where that is. And then finally, you have to create your filter. And I'm going to show you where that is. So let's look at all those steps right now. So the first thing is your canned responses or templates. Let me give this to you full screen. All right. Remember I told you about that settings panel underneath that gear in the upper right hand corner. I told you already that the first tab is general. Well, check it out. This one over here, advanced. You're looking for the one called advanced and you, I don't think you can see my cursor, but anyway, it's highlighted in blue on the screen. Look for the, so go into settings and then look for the advanced tab. 
And then as you can see, the first one here on the list is templates. It says, turn frequent messages into templates to save time. Templates can be created and inserted through the more options menu in the compose toolbar. You can also create automatic replies using templates and filters together. We're going to do that now. So you'll need to enable it. So it, by default, it's disabled. So you'll need to come into your settings, into this advanced tab, and then enable it. That's the first step. You've got to enable it. Okay. Once you're an enabler, Oh, so enable it. Did, did I have that twice? I'm confused. Cans responses are templates. Oh, good. Very clever of me. Very clever. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is enable your template. Then the next piece is you're going to need to create your template. The easiest way to do this is to create a new message. So hit the new message, hit the compose button. And this is where the templates is hiding. There's these three dots at the bottom. So look at the three dots and then you'll see templates as an option there. If you've never used this before, your templates area is going to be empty. If you're like me, you're going to have a couple dozen items in the templates. So the first thing that you need to do is create your template. And the way that you do that is just type right here into this, uh, into this compose window. So it's like you're, you're preparing the email that you're going to send. Actually, you're going to not going to send it. You're going to save it. So compose, bring up your compose, go ahead and, and type out your message whatever it's going to be in this case. Hey, thanks for writing your, your con, you know, we're so glad you wrote us. You're very important to us. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Whatever you want your message to say, here is a special note, 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 note. This is important. If you leave your signature in this form while you're creating your template and then you save it and you save your signature as part of your template, and then later you come in and you create a new message and you put that template in it, you're going to have your signature twice. So I'm pointing this out to you because I want you to think about how the template is going to be used. So I have some templates, which is just little snippets of information that I drop in emails, stuff I say all the time, stuff like, Hey, uh, you know, check out my free video workshop. You know, I've got that saved as a template so I can just click it and it drops the information in the link and stuff in there. So in that message, I don't have my signature saved as part of it because I'm always dropping it into a message that I'm already writing that my signature is already a part of. Does that make sense? So here's the big point. If you're creating a template that you're going to insert into a message that you're manually writing, remove your signature, make that the first step, delete the signature right out of there and then add the information in because you don't want it to double paste your signature. Does that make sense? How I'm explaining that? I hope so. Don't save the signature as part of your template. Now, I'm going to take that right back again, because what we're about to do is create a template that we want to auto send. So in that case, and for that case only, I would say you go ahead and save your signature, maybe your name, maybe your, your email address. You can see, I, I do a lot of crazy stuff with my signature. I'm currently using my signature to ask people to subscribe to my YouTube channel. PS, you can use your signature to ask people to do stuff or advertise something or share a quote or you know, that's your golden nugget. How are you using your signature? In what way are you using your signature for you and for your clients? So that's something interesting to think about. Um, so if you're creating snippets that you're saving into template for you to use in your messages, don't save your signature with it. However, if you're creating a template to become an auto response, like we're doing right now, you may want to save your signature as part of it. So just, I wanted to throw that out to you to be aware of to ask yourself while you're doing it, do you want your signature to become part of this saved message or do you not want it to become part of the saved message? It's all about how you're going to be using this canned response, this template. They don't call it that anymore. It's all about how you're going to use this, this template. Does that make sense? So consider it when you're creating the template, whether or not you want it to save the signature as part of it. 
I would say usually 80% of the time, no, you don't want it to. But in this particular case, Peter, you do want it to because you want it to be part of that response. Okay, let's review. We've enabled templates. We've then hit our compose button so that we can we can type up that that template and then you go right down here the dots you click on templates and then one of the only options you're going to have if this is brand new to you is the button that says save template and it's going to allow you to create a title for it and um and that title usually becomes the subject line which if you're manually creating a message you can override in that moment but it might automatically use it as a auto response so keep that in mind as well, okay? And one more thing about what it's going to do with the with the title of that message, I'll show you in the in a couple steps from now. So watch this whole thing before you do anything, and then come back to this part, and you'll see why in a minute. Okay? So that's how to enable it and how to create it. I hope that makes sense to everyone. Please let me know if you have any questions. This stuff gets really complicated really fast, and it's it can be very difficult to talk about. So please, there are no such thing as stupid questions. Doesn't exist. Ask me any questions you have, okay? So the next piece of this is to create the filter. Now, you can use these filters in Gmail for a lot of different things. The thing that I use them for the most is to add a label. So for example, every time Garrison sends me an email, I have a Gmail filter that automatically puts my label Garrison on his email. And the purpose of that is now I can go back to his label anytime to find email that he sent me. I do that with every one of my clients. When Betty emails me, it labels Betty. When Becker's Catering emails me, labels him Becker's Catering. I do that with everybody. It saves me time in the future so that when people email me, it automatically goes into their folder or label in my Gmail system. That's the way I use this the most. But there's a lot of things you can do with this. Today, we're answering Peter's question about how to set up an autoresponder. So check this out. This is how it works. The first thing you need to do is set the rules. So Peter, in your case, the rule you're going to set is right here in the to field. Let me make this bigger for you. In the to field, that's where you're going to put that, that new email address, me at company.com, Peter at whatever, whatever.com. So you're creating a rule that when you get an email to this email address, something's gonna happen. So think of it like an if, if then statement. If this happens, then this will happen. We're creating a rule, we're, we're programming. This is programming and you have to think of it logically. So this is the first step. Now, as you, can, as you can imagine, if I'm creating that rule to label Garrison's message, I'm gonna put his email address in the from field so that when I get email from Garrison, it labels it Garrison. But that's not what we're doing in today's example. In today's example, we're setting it up so that when you get an email to this address, whatever the specific email address is, then we're going to have it we're going to have it do something. So the first step is to define the rule, set the rule. In this case, to whatever at whatever.com email address. Then, instead of clicking that blue button that says search, you click the create filter. Did I not mention where this was? This is in the search tool at the very top of the Gmail screen. This is where this all begins. It's the same place. You can kind of see it at the top of the screen right here. It says search mail. Um, and it looks like the moon because that's the, the I have the space theme set in my Gmail. What a nerd. Um, so I'm using the space theme on my, um, the planets. I think it's called planets. The planets theme. So yours may look slightly different, but it's the search bar at the very top of Google. If you click that, this, this panel drops down, which allows you to either perform a search in your email by default or create a filter. And that's how we're using it today. So you'll click that search bar. It's going to drop down this menu. Then you put in the email address in the to field, and then you click that button, create filter, not the search button highlighted in blue, but the one next to it create filter. When you do that, when you click right here, create filter, it's going to ask you what you want to happen. So the first thing that we did is we defined, we defined the rule 
of, of, of who we're looking for, in this case, email to a particular email address. Now, this is where we define what happens. So you can see up here at the very top, it says to me at company.com. That's the rule. And this is the place where we assign what's going to happen now. You can see there's a checkbox. There's an option right here for send template. So this is why we have to create the template first. Then we can come in here and we can we can use the send template, check the box next to send template, and then use that drop down box right next to it to choose the template that you want to send. And then you'll click the blue button that says create filter. And that's all there is to it. Now I've got a couple caveats, a couple things to tell you about this. So the first thing is, this is for new emails only. The filtering options only apply to new messages that come in after the filter is created. So even if you have existing emails where the filter could apply, the canned responses will not be sent out to the recipients of those messages. So once again, when you create the rule, it will only activate, it will only fire off from that point forward. It will not it will not email previous responses, okay? And here's another thing. This is the thing I was alluding to a few minutes ago. It's gonna create a different email address for you. Um, so look what happens. Canned responses originate from an address that is still yours, but a slightly altered email address. For example, if your normal address is example123 at Gmail, sending out auto emails will change the address to example123 plus canned response at gmail.com. This may need some experimenting, Peter. We may need to experiment with this to see exactly how it's going to happen and how it's going to work, um, especially if you've already created a different email address as your default. I don't know what it's going to do in that case. So I'm just sharing with you some, some general information. This is how you use the software. This is how it's supposed to work, but I'm not 100% confident or sure how it will work. I also want to point out at this point, I don't know if it's only going to do this once when someone emails you or if it will continue to send it to them every single time they email you. Does that make sense? So there's a caution there. In some auto response sequences, you have the option to say send it once and once only. So I do not know if Gmail is sophisticated enough with this filter tool to only send that canned response once. I'm just sharing some information that exists and I don't know all the details. So this might take some experimentation with us, Peter, okay? We can play with it and see what happens. I would be happy to email you a couple times after you create this rule and we'll see what happens. A lot of, a lot of the things we do on the internet is, well, let's do it and see what happens, <laughs> okay? So that's our, that's our uh, question of the week for Peter. So let me know if you have any follow-up questions on that. Let's experiment with that a little bit and see how it works. Um, like I said, I know some of the answers. I don't know all the answers. So I invite our community to jump into our Facebook group and let us know your experience with these pieces, any of these pieces, canned responses, filters, or the auto response that are set up. I hope this information is helpful to you. Will you let me know? Will you let me know if it's good, if it's bad, what you like, what you don't, and uh, any follow-up questions you have, okay? Ask a Web Geek, sponsored this week by the Active Life Company. Check out their all-natural skin protectant cover for your active lifestyle, and make sure you use the code WEBGEEK. Melissa made that just so you could save an extra 15% off by being part of our community. So do take advantage of that. Also, scan your directory listings, scan.gilbertstudios.com. Find out where your business is appearing online and what needs to be fixed. This is a totally free tool tool. It links to almost, not always, but it links to most of the directory listings so you can jump over and fix them right away. Or if you want a super time saver, ask me about the service that we have that, that fixes these things for you. It's less than $100 a month and it's so worth it with the amount of time it saves you and the extra features and benefits that are a part of that service. I'll tell you about it another time. It's really cool. 
And finally, do take advantage of my free video workshop. You can find all the details at my website, safari.com. It's a free course. There's seven videos, less than 10 minutes, and they walk you through fixing your website, improving your website to improve your business, to improve your results. All the links and details for our show can be found at askawebgeek.com. We invite you to subscribe, follow, join, all that kind of good stuff. Join our Facebook group to participate in our live call, as well as ask your questions. Subscribe on YouTube to check out the show when it comes out each week. We invite your likes, comments, shares, and feedback there as well. Would you also subscribe as a podcast? Would you also subscribe to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review? That would really help us and help others find the show. And, and that's what we're looking to do is help as many people as we can in this format. Askawebgeek.com. All the links and details are there. I'm going to check in with our studio audience one more time before I let you go. If there's anything finally they want to ask or say or do. Otherwise, I'm going to say thank you so much for your time and attention this week. Remember, the internet is a jungle. It's too easy to get lost and fall down hidden traps and get lost and not end up where you want to go. You need to hire a well-trained guide. Join up with a tribe of people that can lead you through and get you where you want to go. I hope you have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful website Wednesday. Let me know if you have any questions or anything that I can help you with this week in your web jungle. Other than that, I'm going to wish you a wonderful week and be safe and stay hydrated and uh, be extra safe tomorrow. Tomorrow night's Halloween. Be extra safe with your family out there. And I wish you the very best. God bless. Hope you have a wonderful week. And we'll see you next week in the web jungle. The internet's a jungle. Roar! track now. Nothing happened. Nothing to see here. Everything is fine. All of this will remain in the Facebook group, but it will all be edited out for the YouTube show. And that's why you should watch it in Facebook because you get to see all the behind the scenes nonsense that happens. Okay, here we go. What was I saying? How can I pick it up? It's going to be so smooth. No one's going to notice that all this nonsense. Ask a web geek. Ask a web Internet's a jungle. Love you guys. Roar. Thanks, Garrison. <laughs>